intrusion of a sexual nature, whether by force or under unequal or coercive conditions. It includes sexual slavery, pornography, child abuse, and sexual assault. In crises such as COVID-19 or cyclones such as Idai, children and women are more vulnerable to exploitation of sexual nature as they seek to survive. They often lack food and access to services that are critical to their well-being and find themselves in compromised positions where they are taken advantage of. Hello and welcome to your favorite show, Identity Zone Global. Today is second week with Adult Rep Clinic where we are talking about child sexual exploitation, especially in humanitarian or crisis situations. And today I am joined by Trevor Tanaka Nyakujka. Trevor, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me today. I love to have young people, especially young men, who talk about these issues because often it is the young men or men who are accused of being perpetrators. But when we have champions such as yourself speaking out and teaching other men, and of course highlighting some of the challenges also men face, it is a blessing. So today I'm excited that not only will you talk about girls, but you also emphasize and highlight uh, the issues that boys also experience in, um, in situations such as this. But as we begin the show, I know that Adult Red Clinic uh, inputted into, um, into a research that was carried out by MSASA and Women's Coalition of Zimbabwe, um, which is called Stopping Abuse and Female Exploitation Self in Zimbabwe Technical Assistance Facility. And I just want you to tell us some of the, out uh, the findings as we are discussing uh, issues of child sexual, uh, child sexual exploitation uh, in humanitarian or, or crisis situations. That's all right. Uh, I think one, one thing that we should appreciate uh, before I go into your question is uh, sexual abuse is a component of socialization, a component of society and how we interact with each other and goes back and grows back to the issue of power dynamics that exists between either men, women, boys, girls, uh, or any role that is set within the society. And in that aspect, when someone induces their power over the other person, it complicates the, the equation and therefore we create a room for sexual exploitation. As so in, in regards to the safe study that was carried out in, in 2020, which was juxtaposing uh, sexual abuse and sexual violence incidences that were happening within Zimbabwe within the years 2019, 2020, uh, there were a lot of findings that came out and most pertinent, most pertinent issue that came out was particularly the issue that there was unfortunately a rise in sexual abuse mm. that happened mainly to women. And right. And this is a good and a bad thing. Good in terms of at least can we it, have the Can it ever be good? Uh, it's <laughs> good in the context that people are reporting. Because if people are not reporting, they'll be suffering yeah. in silence, and the psychological impact of abuse is unfortunately very traumatic for anyone, and they will live with it for life. Right. Because if you share your story, it's a burden. It's a burden that is yeah. you know, you've taken yeah, taken sure. away, mm -hmm. and. It's bad in the sense that we, we as a, we as a nation, are unfortunately uh, not as capacitated to handle issues of sexual abuse within the greater context. But with work with the government, with work with CSOs such as us, such as Sasa, uh, we've been working so hard and trying to create an environment where any person that has been sexually abused or exploited can come and seek services whether it be medi medical, uh, by medical services, I mean mm -hmm. access to, to medication, mm -hmm. PIP, mm -hmm. uh, STI prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. uh, so the PIP is the, s the, the drug you must take immediately after it happens, like within 72 hours. Oh, oh yes. Uh, so maybe just to, to indicate a little bit mm -hmm. more of that. If a person is sexually assaulted, whether it be it annually or vaginally, mm -hmm. or in some cases yeah. orally, uh, they've been exposed to to the HIV virus. So uh, the multisexual approach on uh, sexual gender-based violence that was uh, promulgated by, in conjunction with the Ministry of Health and other key stakeholders uh, that exist within that framework, the police and other service providers as clinicians, we 
we are guided in this. In, we are guided in the sense where, when a person is sexually abused, the person who is abused, then we just assume that they are most likely HIV positive because that's mm. the that's right. that's the irresponsible thing to do. So that assumption that therefore therefore creates for us. Uh, um, a, a responsibility where we're supposed to prevent HIV infection, prevent STI infection, and prevent unintended pregnancies. So, as clinicians, as Ida Break Clinic, we then offer uh, uh, post exposure prophylaxis because yeah. a person has likely been contacted, uh, been exposed to HIV. So, if I get you right, Trevor, you're saying if, if someone goes through the unfortunate form mm. of abuse, the most immediate thing is we they must assume put it palm way before they know they must actually have access to that. Yes. Okay, thank you. That's and as as you were saying, as you were saying, it's very important to appreciate the time. Mm -hmm. Uh the seventy two hours yes. is very critical because it prevents these three things. Mm -hmm. Unintended pregnancies, yes. HIV infection or um uh, SD, SDI mm -hmm. contraction. So it is very, very key for a person to come. Mm -hmm. But I need to note this. Yeah. If you don't come within 72 hours, it does not mean that you don't come. Absolutely. I Please agree with that. come. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so for me, I, I was like, okay, so what are some of the drivers from this report that um causing more sexual or gender-based violence against children? Um, that we discovered this that we discovered in this report because this report centers around the post during COVID. It's, I mean, as soon as COVID hit, and then a um, couple of months later, this report was done. Um, I, I managed to go through it. There's an amazing. There was an amazing increase uh, of of gender based violence. You know, physical violence, e emotional violence was the highest. I think it was about eighty four percent. So maybe w w would you get deeper into that also? In the context of children say okay so what does it look like for a child how does it look like for a child uh, how does someone detect these can be some of the ways in which you are a victim because i also know that as much as we have people a lot of people reporting but many people uh, have no access to reporting especially in a lockdown uh, a lot of people are locked down uh, with their abusers I think I really like what you said when how do you know that you are being abused? It's a very key question. Yeah. And it's really up to definition. If you come back to what I was saying is that rape in its own context is a social issue. Yeah. Uh, issues of power dynamics and all yeah. and all that. And and one thing that that you've also indicated is the rise in emotional abuse. Yeah. And the rise in emotional abuse exists within the context of people are now staying at home. Right. Uh, we've gone. We've go, we are now in a second lockdown where people are now only essential services. Mm -hmm. We're in town. There's no one moving. Only essential services are moving, and the gender roles that we know, that we've come to know over the course of my age, your yeah. your lifetime, have been distorted. Yeah. Because the bedroom is supposed to be going home to work is home. Uh, the wife who is like in quotes supposed to be at home. Is home. Well, are you are you saying that breadwinners were always men? No, I, I, I really hope I'll be a stay-at-home dad at one point in time. Yeah, so then the breadwinner is just not a man. Mm -hmm. the, so we're saying the breadwinner. So for I'll jump in as mm -hmm. well as add to whatever you're saying. Please do not lose your plot. I need you to continue. No, but I, I just wanted to say that in Zimbabwe, about 95% of people are in informal employment, yes. both women and men. So they are locked down together, whether they're married or single moms. And also abuse, let's not also uh, make the mistake to think that abuse only happens to communities where it's a man and a woman who are married. There's also women who are staying with relatives who are, you know, suffering abuse. Oh, yes. And of course, there's also a few men and a few boys who are also suffering abuse from women. But please continue with your life. I'm sorry, I just wanted to throw that Very true. <laughs> um, so, quote unquote, I'll still remain in my book. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The when people are now when people are used to uh, you go to work you go uh, to work we we meet at night yeah. and now you have to spend the whole day together uh, little things that's coming out uh, maybe it's the dishes maybe it's uh, the children are not doing enough yeah. or everything it's built up stress and unfortunately with the patriarchal society that we have 
in this context of Zimbabwe that we live in, whether it be your Shona, your Zizele, your Tonga, uh, or your Kalanga, all of all of our societies do not really talk about communication, whether it be communication yeah. between partners or communication between guardians as parents and their children. And by that virtue, knowing how to effectively and properly communicate distorts the whole aspect of how then do I express what I want to express to this person when I'm frustrated? And it then doubles up in a way that very little things yeah. will be blown out of yeah. proportion. Like, yeah. Because at the end of the day, Treated. when you when you when you could have gone to work and f forgotten about it yeah. because you had a yeah. good day at work, now it's right in front of you. You're stuck and with you it. see it. Yeah. To go on to the issue of sexual exploitation, children are not going. Yeah. They are home, twenty four seven. Uh, in some in some cases, some some children can move around. Some mm. people can, and they are now more exposed, more exposed to perpetrators of sexual violence, whether it be within the ho within the home or within the context of the community that they live in. Trevor, I want to come back to that point. We're taking a quick short break. I want you to really expand on some of the circumstances as you're already doing in which children find themselves where they are sexually exploited. We can never learn enough about this. We need to keep hammering it. We need to keep uh, making people hear. And maybe last week it was a lady talking about other things. Today it's a man. We, 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 more men and more women get to hear about this. We are taking a quick break. Don't go away, stay with To identities on Clover today, we have Ark Adult Rep Clinic in the studio. They assist children, they assist women. They, do you assist men? Yes, they assist men who go through the unfortunate of abuse, especially sexual assault or sexual uh, violence, rape you can you name it. And Trevor, here in the studio, um, is already telling us the circumstances in which children find themselves uh, violated. Please proceed. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, going back to, to what I was saying in the previous segment, uh, we have a lot of circumstances. And unfortunately, these circumstances are more common than we see. Right. And are hidden because we just assume that this is a safe place, this is my neighbor, my right. neighbor would never so, right. my neighbor would never abuse my children. But in my experience, uh, because I work, I work directly with children. Yeah. At Adult Rape Clinic, I've noticed that a greater majority of our survivors, uh, by survivors, I need to point out the people that eventually come out and talk to us and mm -hmm. say that I've been abused, that I've been, because that's a very strong thing it to is. do and it's very never easy. complicated. Yeah. The majority of our survivors are children. And you hear stories, uh, it was my uncle. Yeah. Usually the the closest people. Yes, it was my uncle. He came he came home for the weekend, and it's like let's play this game. Mm. Um, do you like it? Uh, and it progressed mm. slowly. It was a mm. nice cordial game, yeah. and next thing you know, it's sexual in nature, yeah. and yeah. they've already been raped. And because they're a child, they trust. And by child, I I also want to appreciate the fact that it can happen to anyone. Absolutely. Whether you are young or you're old. Uh, then going forward and really expressing to people that I've been sexually abused. It, it's a difficult conversation to have because our society never really talks about sex. Yeah. We, we don't. Right. Because you kind of stigmatize and we spoke about it with Rambi the other time that often um, it, a lot of it is girls and women, and we are we are raised to say, "Oh, what have you done? What, what were you wearing? wearing? What were you wearing?" 
it's not blaming the victim and it's a toxic way of raising children because I remember just growing up being asked to so therefore it's also said you are not sure so therefore one or two you know or to abuse but um I think one of the saddest thing is well, I love what you said Trevor when you said that it happens to everyone you had said prior to that you just you just actually said that um it, it's a progression when I do at the time when I was going to game Rakati the next thing we have to bedroom and you know as a child their sixth sense will be telling them, but the issue of power that you spoke about, the issue of power, the uncle, I'm expected to listen to the uncle. I'm expected to show, you know, obedience and, you know, comradeship to my uncle. I'm expected to trust him, even though in this moment I don't trust him. Because and being you... a social Zimbabwean child, I cannot show my uncle that I don't trust him. Because if you don't, there are consequences. Thank you. What are some of the consequences? Because, uh, like, like I, I, I notice, I notice one, one thing, especially when I'm talking to just and yeah. adolescents, yeah. adolescents in general, uh, they will talk about how they, as individuals, are sexualized in nature. By sexualized, I'm, I'm not meaning that they have sex with everyone. Yeah. By sexualized, I mean, yeah. I mean that their body is expressing mm -hmm. the natural progression of life. Oh, the natural progression of life means that I'm a sexual being and uh, evolution has made it possible for me at a certain age to want and desire things that are sexual in nature. I'm not condoning by any chance uh, uh, sex for, for, young, for young children, but I'm appreciating the fact that us understanding that children are sexual beings makes us appreciate the fact that a child can sit in a certain way and it should not affect the next person. And yeah. a, a child can weigh in a certain way but should not affect the next person. And defining that within the society is one of the best things that we can ever do because when we then understand that people are sexual, I am sexual, you are sexual, everyone else is sexual, mm -hmm. It then, me, it then gives me the opportunity for me to appreciate that I will only express my sexuality with a person that is willingly wanting to express it with me. Yeah. And well, that, that, is, that is deep, huh? That's deep. Uh, just to finish off, let us also appreciate the fact that I am 25. Mm -hmm. I can have my 14-year-old girlfriend willingly participate in did you hear that? 14 year old girlfriend. 14. 14. 14. You can't have a 14 year old girlfriend at 25. Thank you. That's because you, that's child abuse. That's exactly where, where, where <laughs> I wanted to hit on. Okay. Uh, because as, as we are defining consent, mm -hmm. we should appreciate that consent has a social definition and it also has a legal definition. Yeah. And a legal definition that exists within the codification of laws in Zimbabwe talks about how any person that is below the age of 16 cannot willingly give consent for sex. Right. Yeah. So by virtue, my my 25 year old self cannot, even though even if she's even if she's the one who comes, yeah. because that's the argument that. Most most of these pedophiles are given in court. Mm. Oh no, she came, she wanted No, this. but in the first place, you knew it was wrong. You are a horrible person. Exactly. Yeah. Because pedophilia is a crime that exists within Zimbabwe and we lock it up because we don't talk about it. Mm. And the worst the worst part about about pedophilia is that when a child then comes and says, Mama, I've been abused. I don't know. And we start thinking about this child's dressing, this child's yeah. talking. We go back to the victim blaming we were talking yeah. about. Uh, I know this happened, she's a naughty child, she's this. And we also go back to, to issues about uh, Rora. Mm. We, we handle so many cases where a person has been abused, they're 15, they're pregnant, and you hear the father is coming up. Ah, no, 
river. I'm 15 years old. And I think to myself, being pregnant is not the end of the world. I agree with you. But addressing the issue, yeah. which is the child has been abused, mm -hmm. is the issue. Yeah. And we need to address that. That is the most important thing. Nah, it doesn't work. I'll also go back to the issue of the boy child. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a guy and I'm sentimental to, to my fellow men. Yeah. Uh, we have a very disconnect with the fact that most people don't believe that males can be abused. Hmm. I want us to come back to this hot, 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 hot title when we come back from the break to hear Trevor teach us or tell us or share with us about how males and boys, and boys, men are abused. Stay with us, don't worry. In case you're just joining us, this is Nyari Mashamombe on Identity's own Flobo TV show, where today we are very privileged to be hosting Adult Rep Clinic Park and as a fine gentleman who knows Brigade Trevor Tanaka Nyakujiga uh, from Adult Rep Clinic, who is very passionate about young people and um, who is here to talk about sexual abuse and sexual, uh, sexual assault um, amongst children, especially in the in the environment, in circumstances of humanitarian as well as crisis situations. And before we went on the break, Trevor, you already telling us about the, uh, the violence against men and boys. And I know a lot of people's ears are like, yeah, now we're talking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Let's go back to the issue of defining what sexual abuse is. Uh, we live in a society where if we say rape, the first thing that comes into mind is a female. A female. When I'm because the majority of rape, rape victims are women and female and yeah. girls. Uh, yes. Majority of recorded those that come. Because well, this is very contentious mm -hmm. because the same statistics there are no special statistics that go. I think earlier on we said it's good that women are reporting more. Yeah. But it also means that there is a very big chunk of women who are not reporting yeah. of the statistics that we have. The same with men of the statistics that are so it's proportionate. Yeah. It doesn't it, it, it's not like more women we have special uh, you know, researches that are done to get more women compared to men. So we have statistics that are telling us that more women and girls, but because of their, their generic makeup, uh, as well as uh, the physical built, as well as patriarchy that you spoke about. But I don't want to steal your show. I just need to correct some facts as we proceed. I, no, no, that's all right. Uh, the definition of what sexual abuse is goes back and just expresses, we just feel like it's a female thing. But I've Ever since I started this work, I've then come to realize that more and more men are actually vulnerable to sexual abuse, mm -hmm. which happens in different contexts, whether it be it you're back in your village, uh, Twin or uh, and we are playing games, and also let's do that. Let's so is it men to men or female to men? Each other. It's, it's a complex of both. Right. It's male, to ma male on male, uh, female on male. Uh, it's a very good example of. Uh, I was watch. I was watching. I was watching a program a couple of days ago. A young boy was living with a maid, and he started with a game. He's like, I oh, know, so 
touch me? Do you feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. And it eventually became sexual. The the maid got pregnant. Was it a drama? No, it's a true story. Oh, wow. uh, and it happened in, in the United States. Okay. Uh, the, the maid got pregnant. Uh, she just they ran a story that no, she got pregnant with another person. She continued with a job. When the baby was now three years old, that's when the boy went to the mother and was like, the baby is actually mine. How old was the boy? The boy, the child was born when the boy was 11. That is crazy. And if any guys are listening to me, you will know that our conversations, if anyone has ever had sexual encounters with a, with a maid, go to your maids and be like, ah, no, so this is what's happening. Everyone will come to you and be like, ah, Jama, Magapin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Magapin. And we also have expressions in our society that says, Uti, Zawira Mtswanda, Adineze Gwore. And this is the society that we live in. Who would have known? That tremors got that deep shot. But please continue, Trevor. <laughs> I'm full of surprises. Okay, good. Um, so we good ones, though. We, appreci we appreciate that context where Muruma Harambe, Murume always says yes. You should always be ready for action. So when there's a borderline between, there's a gray area that then ex exists between is this abuse or is this me being a man? So a lot of boys are being abused but do not then go forward and talk about it because number one, they're afraid of being shamed. Mm -hmm. And ever since any boy will tell you in Zimbabwe that every time you wanted to cry, your father would slap you in the back and go, Koma mm -hmm. And from that, from that upbringing, when you are sexually assaulted, whether it be by male, and let's Let's even go to the fact that if it's a male on male, that's something that's taboo, that doesn't exist. Yeah. And you know our laws and, and, mm -hmm. and... So, if I'm abused by a man, just me expressing myself to anyone, saying, ah, so, dad, you know what happened, dad, mom, you know, just this guy, it will eventually get lost in translation. It translates to the people that you're talking to that you're gay mm -hmm. and this is something so being gay that you like boys if you're a man you're being said you like men if you're a girl you feel like girls yes because because it's it's not yet been defined clearly within our laws laws and society and the most important part is the society because that's where we live i, I, I beg to deep day to day there, there trevor because if as you know, I have had, I've read a lot of books that actually says that even in a village where I come from, you hear stories of a woman to woman who stayed together, who just chose to stay together. Mm -hmm. People would be knowing, mm -hmm. and people would be just minding their own business. Yeah. They just, of course, don't talk about it. But the fact also that the law does not recognize that. If the law started to talk about it, then you would, it would open the way for people to come and report violences within those spaces. And then people, everybody begins to say, but please, that's my thought, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do agree with you. If, if you look in the context of rape as an issue of human rights, there's, there's a word that I really like which talks about what we call the nicularization mm -hmm. of human rights. And in terms of human rights, they have to be codified by law. Yeah. They have to exist within a statute. If it's not in a statute, it does not exist. Yeah. And after it exists in the statute, people are informed about the law and where you stand, where it exists, and that then gives protection, which is at the end of the day what we want. I'm reminded of issues of sodomy. Uh, to say, of course, we have sodomy in our, uh, the law identifies it as sodomy. If a, a, a boy or a man has been raped, or is being sexually assaulted by another man. It's, sold, it's sodomy and uh, I think other codifications. We do have codification, but it's just less than grievous. It's not as grievous as, um, as, as rape. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in terms of how it's 
managed in terms of our court system in Zimbabwe. The charge is the same. Um, okay. But in terms of abuse for a man, uh, the law defines this as aggravated sexual assault. Yes. If there's penetration mm -hmm. within that uh, happens to a man. Yeah. So they seem as different names, rape, se aggravated sexual, uh, sexual assault. But in terms of me appearing before a court of law, law within yeah. Zimbabwe, they are handled in the same. They're handled in the but same way. But are the way. charges the same? The charges are the same. Are the same. Are the same. Okay, great, Trevor. What do you have to say to someone? I think this. I think it would require an extra show because I really also feel like um, while we say men, it's a fewer men who get raped. I think we need a, a total topic just focusing on men, especially because a lot of people will be like, ah, but Muruma no Rekwase, you know. So we need to come and talk about that. How, um, no matter how uncomfortable it is, our communities need to be informed. But last words. Uh, my last words, whether it is a boy, it's a girl, listen to their story. The most important thing that we need is for us to believe survivors, because every story counts. Wow, that was Trevor Tanaka Nyakujiga uh, from Adult Rep Clinic in the studio assisting us to understand the issues of sexual abuse, sexual assault, sexual harassment, um, as well as sexual exploitation within the environs of crisis. I do hope that you understood one or two. We are hoping that we'll continue uh, conversations around. I mean, it's a big issue, uh, uh, Trevor, uh, that we need to dig deeper circumstances of how somebody is assaulted, sexually assaulted, how you keep looking and knocking at doors to get assisted if you go through the unfortunate of rape, but also to unpick and understand uh, the rape against men. Usually the, the, the word is not rape, it's so sexual assault assault as well as sodomy. But I think our boys and men and parents must understand because no child must go through the unfortunate of rape. Until we meet next time, keep it real. Have a good one.